Hello, investors, and welcome to our session here today. My name is Ken Rose, and this is Short Verticals. So interesting day unfolding in the market here. We had a nice big gap to the upside, and things are starting to settle down a little bit. In these types of market conditions, how does the short vertical strategy fit in? Well, that'll be part of the topic of our discussion here today, but we also want to build an option traders watch list something we've talked about doing over here in the last couple of sessions as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get underway. And to do that, we're going to start off by running through a few disclosures to be aware of. Do remember investors that options carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. The information here is for general informational purposes only. It should not be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular strategy, security, chart pattern, or investment strategy. Do remember that for the sake of simplicity, the examples in this presentation do not take into consideration commissions and other transaction fees. We do use the paper money application here. This is for educational purposes only. We want to remember that successful virtual trading during one time period does not guarantee successful investing of actual funds during a later time period as market conditions do change continuously. It's also important to remember that short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration, regardless of the in the money amount. In the money option has a higher risk of being assigned early. It's important to keep that in mind because the paper money virtual trading application will not assign a short position early, which is different from what could occur in a real trading account. And of course, do remember the past performance of any security or strategy does not guarantee future results or success. So investors, again, what we wanted to discuss here today is we wanted to talk about how to build an option traders watch list. And let's go ahead and pull up the Thinkorswim platform so we can just get right underway with that. I'm going to do that here in just a moment. And while that's coming up, do you want to welcome everybody here? So just look over the chat. We don't want to welcome Kevin and John and Mike and everybody else. Look, we have John McNichol over there in the chat window to help us out here with chat. So great to have John here, very knowledgeable investor. Do feel free to send your questions over there to John. I'll also try to peek over there periodically to see if there's some questions that I can help out, help out with. Again, a welcome to Robert and Susan and everybody else. Debbie, life in the fast lane. Truth will always prevail. Scott, and these are just some names. <laughs> so some great names, catchy names over there. All right, investors, so let's talk about building an option traders watch list. And to do that on the Thinkorswim platform, let's go ahead and going to open up our platform right here. And right now we're looking at the S&P 500. We'll talk about this a little bit later on in our discussion. We want to get right into building an option traders watch list. To do that, we're going to start up here on the scan tab. So here on the Thinkorswim platform, we've got some choices here. I'm going to come up here to the top and click on scan. And this will bring up the scanning function on Thinkorswim platform. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when we're talking about building an option traders watch list. There's some key things that option traders look for with regards to the underlying options on a stock. And those key things are going to be, first of all, liquidity. And we're talking about liquidity, we're basically talking about the spread between the bid and the ask price. We'd like that spread to be as tight as possible. Secondly, we're usually looking at choice with regards to expirations. You know, if you are an active option trader, frequently, if you're an, if you're an active option trader, frequently you like to fine tune your expiration dates. For example, there may be an earnings announcement that's coming up this week. It would be nice to have the possibility of setting up a trade related to that earnings announcement where the options expire in the same week as the earnings announcement. Not all, not, not all options on underlyings provide weekly expiration dates, but that is something that can be beneficial. And then, and, and then another factor to keep in mind is strike price choices. Now, when you're looking at the different strike prices, it's nice to get a strike price that you can fine tune in relationship to support and resistance. So when we're looking for strike prices, it's nice if we have dollar wide, some stocks even have 50 cent wide strike prices that helps us to fine tune things. And then of course, overall liquidity with regards to the underlying stock. In other words, we'd like to have the stock to have a fair amount of volume that helps to provide volume on the underlying option, which provides liquidity in that, in that area as well. So those are some key things we're looking at. Now, coming over here to the Thinkorswim platform then, I'm sitting here at the scan page and right here, this is typically what the scan page will look at, will look like when you first open it. But we want to address some of those key factors as far as building an option traders watch list. And to do that, we'll begin with the scan in and the intersect with choices right here. And with regards to liquidity, there, there are some options that are, that are quoted in penny increments rather than nickel increments. In other words, the price of the option goes up by pennies rather than nickels. So one of the things we'll look at here with regards to scanning is we'll start off by scanning in not all stocks, 
we're going to pull this choice down right here and we're going to go into the public area right here and we're going to look for penny increment options turn to public i'm going to come here to the ends and over here we'll come down here here's penny increment options so right there we're starting off by scanning in only those options that come in penny increments now a second consideration in that is related to the is related to the flexibility with regards to expiration dates so we're starting off with all of the all the companies that provide options that are quoted in penny increments now we're going to contract things further and say we want penny increment options but we also want to have weekly expiration dates so to accomplish that just to the right here in scanning we have intersect with and we're going to come down here and choose intersect with we're again we're going to again come to the public area down here to the public and we want to look for options that have weekly expiration so we're going to come down here under public we'll come down here to the to the public s through w and right down here we have weeklies so right now we are scanning in only those those options that come in penny increments and pro also provide weekly expirations now we need to address some of the other things with regards to liquidity of the underlying stock and those types of things and also we and also we 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 also want to narrow things down down further here if we just stay with these two right here and i come over here and run a scan well look it looks like right here it looks like right over here it looks like we'll have about 370 matches well we probably want to narrow things down a lot more than that and we can do that by setting things like minimum price we can also set market cap and we can also set volume now you'll notice here when this thing when the when the scan page first comes up these are all stock choices which is just fine for our minimum price i'm going to start off with a minimum price let's say 25 dollars here so rather than that kind of a bizarre number there which is a minus i'm just going to put in 25 dollars here and i over here where it says stock right here rather than net change I want to go with last over here. There it is, last. Okay, so talk about last. That's where it last traded. And we're going to say on last $25 as a minimum. And, you know, I, I, I would say that that would be somewhat of a typical with regards to a minimum for an option trader. Now, some of you may say, hey, wait a minute, Ken. I like my stock to be trading at $60, $70, or $100. Or some of you may be saying, hey, I like my stock to be trading at $10. That's totally okay. You know, the purpose of this discussion is to show you the key variables and how to put things together, but you definitely want to make this your own. So you, so you do want to look at this not as a set it and forget it. This is basically an introduction to some of these key metrics that we're looking at setting, but you definitely want to come in here and set these metrics to meet your own individual investing style. So we're going to stay here then at $25. Well, Another area we'd like to look at is market cap. I don't know on stock if we have market cap or not. Let's take a look. That may be under another section, possibly fundamentals, but I'm going to come over here. Again, we have stock, stock, stock. I'm going to come over here and grab this one, and let's see if we have market cap in here. We may have. There it is right there, market cap right there. So there's our market cap. And on the market cap, um, why don't we start off with um, how about – how about to, you know, we'd like to get something that's healthy. I'm going to go with 50, um, 50, 50 billion. So we'll go 50 billion, 100 million like that. Okay. Notice, notice that we came down here when, when we put in our last at 25, it took us down here to 20, 251 matches. Now we put in our market cap here of 50 billion. And that puts us at 131 matches. Would still like to narrow things further. And one of the areas we want to look at is we want to look at at at, at liquidity with regards to the stock trading. It's very difficult to look at liquidity from an option trading thing as far as running a scan in relationship to that. You can do that, okay? But with regards to what we're looking at right here, we're looking at more of it from a stock perspective, and then and then look for, and then and then look for the underlying strength in the options rather than looking at it strictly from an option perspective and then and then look at and then look and then look at the stock that is on top of that okay and we'll possibly discuss that further as far as why we're looking at that and possibly and in a future session we'll run a scan using spread hacker and the like and when you and one of the things we found out in running the spread hacker is when you when you put in parameters that meet the spread hacker oftentimes you'll go out and you'll look at some of these other key areas that you're not able to filter under the spread hacker and they are just not pleasing okay
but we will run the spread hack however generally in here we've we've taken the we've basically taken the part of the investors looking at it more from looking at it from a stock perspective and then looking for some nice liquidity with regards to the underlying options so do note over here that we're in the scan tab but we're in the stock hacker we're not in the option hacker we're not in the spread hacker we are in the stock hacker okay and we're coming down here. So the, uh, right here, this is where we want to put in our average volume to see what's going on in relationship to that. So to do that, we're not going to be able to find average volume under stock because these are just parameters that are directly related to the stock. We do have volume in here, okay? This will tell us how much volume is currently going on today, but that's not what we want. We want the average volume. So to bring that into play, we'll come up here to where you have add filter on the page right here. We're going to click on this and I've got stock, I've got option, I've got fundamentals. I wanna look at study because average volume is a study. So I wanna bring up a study filter. So I'll click on that and here's our study filter. For right now, I'm gonna delete this line right here, like so. Now we're gonna look at average volume. Now there's a lot of different things here we can do the study, but what we wanna focus in here is average volume. So I'm gonna click on this study that comes up by default, which is ADX crossover, which is not of interest to us at this point. I'm going to click on that. We're going to come down here to volume. And underneath volume, we're going to come over here to average volume. And here we have average volume. And we have average volume. We're using a 50 period average volume. And right now we say the moving average volume needs to be greater than or equal to 1 million. Okay. And I'm okay staying with that for right now for 1 million. With regards to how many results we want to see, I'm going to set our results here to about, oh, let's, let's go ahead and go with 100. We actually don't want to get, we, and what, what I actually said that to is 200. We actually don't want to get to 200. We'd like to be somewhere below 100. Let's see how we do with regards to, the, with regards to these parameters. So what are we doing here then, investors? So we're on the scan tab. We're in the stock hacker. For the scan in, we've said, I just want to go to penny increment options. And then I want to intersect that with weeklies. And in addition to that, so this ensures that we have quotes and in penny increments, so we have expiration weeklies. And we've said we want the price of the underlying security to be at least $25. That's typical with option traders, but if you want to go lower or higher, that's fine as well. We've said with regards to market cap, we want to go with a 50 billion market cap on that. And then with regards to average volume, we're saying 1 million shares are traded a day on average over the last 50 trading days. So with that, then we'll go ahead and hit our scan right here and see how many results we get. So we have 111. We said we wanted to get this down to, down somewhere below 100. Why don't we go ahead and jack up the market cap here a little bit? There's some different things we can do here, by the way. We could go ahead and jack up the average volume. That would decrease thing. We could jack up the market cap. We could also move the last price up higher. You know, there's there's some different things. So we could we go market cap, volume, and and or price here. I'm kind of thinking about a little bit. Um, let's let's jack up the um, the the market cap here just a little bit. I'm going to go from 60 billion, 100 million. I'm going to go from 50 billion, 100 million to 60 billion right here. Okay. And let's run our scan again to see how many results. So that so that did bring us down below 100, but we're sitting right there. At, we're sitting right there at 99. Um, maybe we'll jack this up a little bit. So it's so instead of so instead of 1 million, let's go with uh, about 1.5 million here. See what that does for us. We'll run that, and that brought us down. That only brought us down to 95. Okay, but I think I, I think you can see I, I think you can see what we're doing here is we can we can work with our variables and we can make them a little bit more restrictive in order to bring the number of our results down. So we've got here 95 results. So this this can be a, this this can be a good starting point with regards to building an option traders watch list. So right here I've got this. I'll come down here. And I'm going to click on this little guy right here and choose Save as Watch List. So we'll go ahead and save this as a watch list. Now, before I save it, I also want to show you something else here on the Thinkorswim platform. Is you can come up here, rather than put these numbers in each and every time you want to run this scan, just come up here to where you have Add Condition Group right over here to this menu right here. Click on this and choose 
save scan query like this. And then right in here, you can put in a name so that you save the scan query. I'm not going to do this because I've already saved something. I've already saved this particular scan. It's not exactly the same, but it's fairly close. But just put in the name right there, then click on save. And then after you do that, when you want to bring the scan up, just come up here and click on this and choose load scan query. Come over here to personal. And there's my little copy right there. I, I usually call mine $1 wide liquid. I, I added Schwab on to the end of this. So this is $1 white liquid, but you could give it any name you want. And then when you brought it up, you could bring it up in that way rather than putting in the variables each and every time. Okay. By the way, you can also share that scan query. If you want to share it with someone, just come up here and select this right here and choose share scan query like this. And then you've got this. We'll go ahead and click on share right here. And there you have the link right there that you could go ahead and send that out to people if you wanted to share that with them. Now, that's it. So that's so we're not talking about a whole lot of filters here. It's rather straightforward, but we're not done just yet. OK, so we want to come back over here. We want to save this as a watch list. We'll come down here, save as watch list and we'll give this watch list a name. And what do we want to call this? I'm going to call this um, uh, one dollar wide liquid i'm going to call this session just let me know that this is one that we build during our session right here i'm going to click on save okay so that watch this is now saved so now we can come over here on the thinkorswim platform i have a watch list up here already this 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 is one that i built previously but let's bring up the one that we just built okay I'm going to come up here and let's see what this guy is. Click on this and I want to come down here to personal and I've got $1 wide liquid session right there. Okay. Click on that. Now I've brought this up. Now, that's just, we have, we still have 100 stocks here. So we, so we want to break this down further. And to do that, what you can do, I'm going to bring this site out here a little bit wider so we can see this a little bit better. Like so. I'm going to do a right click up here on symbol and I'm going to choose customize and let's for right now we don't need implied volatility we may come back to that but I'm going to bring up here sector I want to bring over sector right here so I can see what sectors these individual stocks are in okay and then in addition to that I want to bring up I can bring up market cap over here as well there's market cap, so I can grab that column and move that up here as well and bring those over. So you can see that we've got these guys over here. Here's our sector. Now, when you when you put this together, investors, with regards to an option traders watch list, because sectors move into favor and move out of favor, you usually want to have representation from all 11 sectors that make up the S&P 500. So that's why we're bringing this up, okay? Now, if I come back over here, then I want to sort by sector to begin with. I bring up my sector. So here I have energy. Notice under energy, I have these different market caps. I can come over here and pick and choose between these. I probably am not going to want to keep all these energies, maybe some of them, but definitely not all of them. And then we can come down here and we've got here. Here we have communication services. I got a lot of communication services down here. I I definitely may want to may want to may may want to have two or three here, but I, I probably don't want to have all of them. Okay. Notice down here, I, got, I have a couple of random ones. I'm just going to get rid of the ones that don't have sectors because they really don't come into play here. They come through on our search, but they're really not something that we want to deal with. So we got rid of those. Okay. Let's get rid of anything that doesn't have that anything that is not related to a sector right here. So here we have it right here. We've all got all these sector stocks right here. So we're gonna come down here. And what I found is the best way to do this is to start at the bottom. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna fine tune things with regards to liquidity. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here on the Thinkorswim platform. I'm gonna select trade here. We're gonna collapse this, collapse this. And I don't know how that guy got up there, okay. I'm going to click on trade and let's go ahead and bring up meta so there's meta notice we have an option trade here i'm going to come down here i'm going to go out about 23 days i'm going to open up the option chain rather than choose all here i'm just going to say i want to i want to look at eight of these okay 
So right here, I can see the at the money options and I can go in the money a little bit going both ways. Notice on Meta, one of the things I want to keep in mind, notice that the strike prices are $5 wide rather than a dollar wide. That's actually going to be OK. And the reason I say that's OK is because you want to be OK about adding stocks to this list. Number one, stocks that are stocks that are frequently followed. And right now, you know, there's there's what's called the Magnificent Seven. Meta is one of the Magnificent Seven. I think you also have Apple, you have Tesla. Um, what else you got in there with regards to Magnificent Seven? We got uh, Amazon, Microsoft as well. So, you know, it, it's OK to add those that, that, that are frequently followed, whether or not they meet our parameters. You also may have some individual stocks that you just like to trade over time. Feel free to add those to your option traders watch list, whether they have five dollar wide spreads or whether they have the liquidity or anything else. You definitely want to make this watch list your own. OK, but here we here we have Meta. And the reason the, and the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I want to, What I want to do next is I just want to check the slippage on the at the money options. I'm going to take into consideration the stock is trading at $300. You know, sometimes sometimes investors will say maybe maybe I may, maybe with regards to the to the slippage between the bid and the ask price, I'm okay with 10 cents for each $100. So if we're talking about a $300 stock, then possibly we're okay with with 30 cents of slippage between the bid and the ask price. We'll go ahead and play the part of that investor here today. But you may be OK with a with a wider amount of slippage, which is fine. Or you may want to keep it a tighter amount of slippage. That's going to be fine as well. So looking at looking here with with regards to that, I'm just coming here to look at the at the money options. So I'm sitting here. The difference between the bid and the ask on the put side is basically a dime for a $300 stock. If we come over here to the call side, I'm going to collapse this now a little bit because we've discussed that. Come over here to the call side. I'm going to get, need a little bit more room. There we go right there. We come over here to the call side. We're, take, we're looking at about, about a 15 cent slippage. So with regards to Meta, there's a couple of things with regards to Meta. One, it's part of the Magnificent Seven. Two, we're OK with regards to slippage, playing the part of the investor that's OK with 10 cents for each $100. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that one. Here we have two Googles. We have Alphabet here, and then, and then we have GOG. I'm going to go ahead and delete GOOG because I'm only interested in one of those. And, and Google is the one that is typically seen as part of the Magnificent Seven. So we'll go ahead and go with the G-O-O-G-L. I believe that's alphabet, OK? But after you decide to delete one, just hit, just hit the up arrow key on your keyboard. And that will take you to the next one. Here we have Netflix. Do we, do we want to keep Netflix? Well, Netflix is a popular stock, but we don't necessarily need to keep it. It's a $400 stock. It comes in two and a half dollar wide increments, okay? And what are we talking about here? We're talking about a so we're sort of about twenty five cents. We're going to go ahead and keep. I'm going to go ahead and keep Netflix just because it does tend to be in the news a lot. We'll go ahead and keep that. Here's Disney. Another stock tends to be in the news now. Here now here 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 when we come to Disney, notice that Disney has dollar increment strike prices. This is nice. Dollar increment strike prices. And if we look at the distance between the bid and the ask price. Now we're talking about a hundred dollar stock, but the difference between the bid and the ask price is only four cents. So we'll go ahead and keep Disney. Come over here to coming over here to Comcast Corp. Dollar increments, very tight, four cents. We'll go ahead and keep that one. TMUS, dollar increment strike prices. What do we got? About seven cents there. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. Verizon, dollar strike prices, three cents right there. I'll go ahead and keep that. So we're sitting here with communication. So we're sitting here with. We have five or six communication services. We're going to be okay with that. We're basically going to play the part of the investor that's okay with that. However, if you wanted to narrow that down further, you want to feel free to do that. And over time, as you're coming in here and using this, you'll see over time, you know what, I think I want to get rid of this one and get rid of this one and focus mostly on this one in relationship to this particular sector industry group. So again, you just start off at the bottom. Here, here we come into information technology. Here's Texas Instruments. These are $5 wides, okay? Only talking about about seven cents here with regards to the difference right there. Let's go ahead though and look at it from a, if we've got Texas Instruments, we also have Taiwan Semiconductor. These are dollar wise. Let's go ahead and make a choice between these two. They both do very similar things. We'll go ahead and, and we'll take off Texas Instruments. So I'm gonna delete that one and then hit my up arrow key and lean a little bit more towards Taiwan Semiconductor and continue to go up here. So investors, we're not gonna go up through the entire list, okay? If, with regards to our session here today. I just wanted to show you 
how you, what, what this next step is. And this next step is important. It's probably going to take you, I would say, going through 100 stocks, it, 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 it'll, it'll probably surprise you. You'd probably be able to get through these 100 stocks within about 20 or 30 minutes very, very easily. Okay. And then you may want to go back and, 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 and further pare it down. Okay. But the concept here is to create a watch list that has stocks from representation from all the sectors and also has good liquidity with the underlying options and also a fair amount of choice plus some additional stocks that you may be interested, that, that you may be interested in trading. Then once you've done that, you, you have it all completed here and you can pull it up and then start trading with it. So I'm going to go ahead and shift gears here now and move over to a watch list that I previously built using this same process. And then we'll look to see if we can find a stock to trade in relationship to the current market conditions here today. OK. All right. So we, so we went through a lot of information. I'm going to take a quick peek over here in the chat window and get a big thanks to John for helping out over there. I'm just seeing if maybe there's a question over there that I can help out with here as well. It looks like John's got you guys taken care of here. Yeah, it looks like we're doing good. OK, great. So and somebody that has here. Add, add, um, add, add RSI over 70. Hey, you want to go ahead and, and add RSI over 70? Have at it. That's, that's just you. Again, you do want to make this your own. And you can add the RSI over there on the scan tab if you would like to. All right. Okay. So here we are then. I'm going to shift gears here and move over to, let me come over here to personal. And I'm going to go to my $1 wide liquid. By the way, notice here, investors, that I've got two things here. I have $1 wide liquid with this little target right here, and I have $1 wide liquid without the target. The $1 wide liquid without the target, that's my watch list. This is actually my original scan. So if I wanted to pull up my original scan here in the gadget area, I could do that, and it would populate with the scan after it is run. We're not going to do that here today. We're just going to pull up the $1 wide liquid Schwab that I had built earlier. And we're going to change our columns here a little bit because I've already gone through here and paired it the first time. And I think I, I, think I have this paired down to about 70 stocks. But, it, but with regards to now looking for a stock to trade, I'm going to change my columns. So I'm going to do right click here on symbol, come here to customize. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm OK on market cap. That's why we have it. I'm OK on sector. I should have representation from all the sectors. But now I want to bring up here is implied volatility because that's going to help us out when we're looking for a potential trade right here. OK, so I've got symbol implied volatility. I have a customized column here. I have a percent change and we're going to say OK. And I'm going to sort by implied volatility. Many of you are familiar with this little process because we, we do this. We play the part of the investor that does this each and every time. So we'll sort by that, bring up, we have the highest levels of implied volatility up here to the top. Now, investors, what, what, we, what we've done in here is we're playing the part of the investor that rather than run a scan using the option hacker, and we'll take a look at that in another session and talk about some of the reasons we kind of shy away from that, some of the difficulties with regards to the results we get. Rather than do that, we start off with a watch list like this. Then we'll, we'll use custom columns to identify potential technical signals. For example, right here today, I've got a customized breakout column. And we'll go over some of these columns over time. Today, we'll just look at the breakout column because that's basically what's happening to the market right now. If we come over here to charts here for just a second, just, you know, why did I choose breakout column? If I come over here to charts and we look at, here's the SPX. And earlier today, it's not going on now. <laughs> But earlier today, we had a nice gap up here to the upside and a continued run. So earlier today, we did have a nice breakout. That's why I chose the breakout column right here. Now, it looks like we have a breakout and a little bit of a fade going on here. So it'll be interesting to see if we can locate a reasonable candidate here. OK, we'll see what we can do here, though. OK, so, yeah, that's a little bit disappointing to see the breakout and then the fade. But earlier, a bit of a breakout. So that's that's why we have our column right here. So let's come over here and look at some individual stocks then. I'm going to bring up a chart here. And we, here's our highest levels of implied volatility. Now, typically what we've done, investors, is we've avoided the top 10 here just because of the volatility. There's a reason this implied volatility is high, and that's because the stock is anticipated to have a fair amount of price movement, okay? And or has had some significant price movement in the past. 
So in an effort to be a little bit more conservative, we've opted to pass on the top 10 here. We could come in here and trade these. I could bring up Tesla right here. We can say, hey, the average implied volatility is high here, which means if we did a short vertical, we're probably going to get down below here to a, to a larger extent relative to the existing price. And if we come down here further, we've opted to kind of avoid that type of volatility. But we may come in here and do one or one or two of these um, along the way. But let's go ahead for today. We'll skip the top 10. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We come down here to PayPal. It looks like PayPal. So PayPal has a breakout and a fade, just like the S&P 500. So that may be a possibility. We'll come down here a little bit further. What do we got? CRM. CRM, it looks like CRM had their earnings announcement. CRM has a breakout and it's continuing to move to the upside. So CRM looks a little bit more healthy. Plus, even after the volatility crush, because the earnings announcement, I'm thinking the earnings announcement is after the market today. Oh, that's not going to work. If the earnings announcement is after the market today, we're, we're going to go ahead and pass on. I'm not sure why we have this big move to the upside. That looks like something that would occur on an earnings announcement, but no. I've got here that earnings announcement is coming out after the market today. So we'll go ahead and pass on CRM. Let's come up here and take a look at PayPal here for a second. So we've got here. So when a stock breaks above a resistance level, that resistance level becomes a theoretical support level. We want to identify overall, would this stock be considered to be bullish? Because we would like to trade bullish because that's what the overall market's been doing is run to the upside. Well, here's a low, here's a low, here's a low. Those lows are getting higher. Here's a high, here's a high, here's a high. The highs appear to be getting higher. So we do have an uptrend here from a technical analysis standpoint, not a particularly strong uptrend. If we come over here and kind of put together our channel like this, it's not, a, it's, 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 it's not on a big bullish slant here, but somewhat of a bullish slant. So here we have a, we're just talking to stock in an uptrending channel that has came up here and hit the top part of the channel and now is moving to the downside. So if we're doing a short vertical, would like to be able to, with regards to our short put vertical, would like to be, we would like to have our short strike price to be below this theoretical support level. And it's theoretical because it's just being tested today, but the further down here we can get the better. In fact, it would be great. I'm just gonna come down here and see where this intersects. It looks like it intersects right here, right in that area right here, as far as the bottom part of that channel. It would be even better if we could get down at or below this level right here, which is which is the which which is about fifty-seven dollars with regards to a short put vertical as we are fading right here. Well, that's that that's and then we can come down here and we go further. Now, by the way, investors, these customized columns are not perfect. Okay, they tend to do a pretty good job, but there's no harm in just coming over here and just looking at the individual charts as well to see possibly some possibilities here. A little bit earlier today, here before our session. I pulled up one that was not a that was not a breakout, but it was a bounce. I think it's ISRG. There's ISRG, and you can see earlier today we had this big bounce, but that's faded as well. <laughs> that's faded as well. Okay, so let's come back over here to what we're looking at. It looks like PayPal. We should have a breakout. That breakout is now is is now off of the column because we've come down and we basically hit yes, yesterday's close. Do we got any other breakouts here maybe to look at? Ooh, look at that one. That's this is this is interesting. This is Bank of America. Looks like on this one we have a breakout and a bounce. I'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards this one because of the strength of the underlying technicals. Let's see what we can do here on Bank of America. So we're breaking out of this resistance level right here. We'll come up here. There's our resistance level. Now that resistance level is a theoretical support level, and that's sitting right there at $30. It would be nice if we get down here below 29, or it would be nice if we get down here below the 29.50. So a 30 or even better would be a 29 strike price short put vertical, okay? So I'm, I'm looking at this one. This one appears to me to have stronger technicals, but I'm gonna leave it all up to you here, okay? Would you rather do a short put vertical example trade here and just kind of go with, go, go with what you're thinking, okay? Earlier, I was basically playing the part of the investor that wanted to see a breakout and was okay with a fade. Not all investors are going to be okay with a fade, but some are going to be okay with a fade. Let's look at the difference between PayPal right here, which is coming down here and testing it, or Bank of America. 
Which way do you guys want to go? PayPal or Bank of America? Just go ahead and chat in the symbols, PYPL or BAC, PayPal or Bank of America here. It usually takes a second or two between the time I request a vote here and things actually show up there in the chat window. But what are you thinking here? PayPal or, here's PayPal again, PayPal coming up in testing support or Bank of America Coming down here where we have a breakout of this resistance level up here at $30, PayPal. So I've got, looks like Bank of America has it. So I'll go with what you guys want to do, Bank of America. Yet yeah, there isn't one right or wrong. And also please note investors that this is a long watch list. Now noted that as we, as we go down here further with regards to implied volatility, the reward to risk ratios relative to the existing price tend, tend to drop down. But still there, there may, there's probably is a better stock uh, with regards to with regards to technicals and all those other things, if you go down further into this, I'd encourage all of you to build your option traders watch this and go through your own list. You're most likely to be able to find a much better candidate that we're, that what we're looking that what we are looking at in here with a limited time frame in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we can do here with regards to Bank of America. Now, just a reminder, we're playing the part of the investor that would like a a short vertical that has a 70% or greater probability of success, which means we're looking at a delta for the short leg at 30 or lower. Remember the delta is the probability that the option will be in the money on the expiration. So if we wanna have a 70% probability of success and we'd sell our short leg has a 30% probability of being in the money, that gives us a theoretical 70% probability of success. Doesn't mean we'll be successful. Doesn't even mean we'll be successful 70% of the time, but from a theoretical standpoint, that's what we're looking for. So we'd like a 70% probability of success. We'd also like to get a 1% return on risk for each day that we're in the trade. Now that means that, 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 means that when, when, we're, when we're looking at the time in the trade, if we have 23 days or 24 days, which is typically what we're looking at, we'd like to have a return on risk of, of 23 or 24%. This is before transaction fees, by the way. Okay, so this is, this is, this is, this is outside of transaction fees. We've also said that we, if we're doing a dollar wide credit spread, we need to get at least 19, we need to get at least a 19 cent credit and preferably a 20 cent credit. In other words, a 19 or $20 credit just because of the impact of transaction fees. Okay, so with those parameters in mind that we're playing the part of the investor that's looking at those parameters, and by the way, those parameters, again, you wanna make those parameters your own, feel free to adjust those with regards to your own trading style. Let's come up here to the trade page though and see what we got here with Bank of America. We're gonna collapse this side here. Generally in here, we go out about 23 to 30 days. So we'll, we'll come in here, we'll see what we can do on, on 30 days. Um, right here is our Delta. Ooh, boy, I don't know. This is gonna be kind of sticky. I don't know, if, boy, you know what? I don't know if we're gonna have enough premium here, investors, if we go out 23. Let's see on 30, if we can get enough premium. Here's our Delta. See, the problem we have here is because the price of stock is sitting here at 30, the delta here changes dramatically by just a $1 change here. If we could do 30 right here, then we'd be looking at a, a delta here of 41, which means our probability of success will only be 59%. But if we come up here to 29, we're not gonna get our 19 cent credit. If we come over here to 30, let's do right click on our 30, choose sell. I'm gonna go vertical and dollar wide. We're only, whoop, is that right? 30, so, so on the, on the, if we go 30, we have 59% probability. We have plenty of juice here as far as a credit, so to speak. But if we drop down to the 29 and do a 29, 28, we're dropping down here to 16. So we don't have the sweet spot. It'd be nice if, if this company had 50 cent increments, okay? <laughs> that way we could fine tune it more. But would we be okay with a 30 right here, that would be that'd be our strike price. I'm gonna I'm gonna shy away from this just a little bit, and let's go back in and do some mining here again. Okay, let's come back over here. How about we come over here and we've got any breakouts occurring here? There's our PayPal breaking out once again. It looks looks like it's moving off there a little bit. Looks like now we have INTC that's breaking out there a little bit. How about CRM? Oh, CRM, we already talked about that. They have earnings coming up. Why don't we take a look at INTC Intel? 
It is breaking out of that point right here. How far down can we get here on Intel? Can we get down below this support level? So this is a theoretical support level right here. That's at 45. This is a real, this is a proven support level at 4360. Can we do a 43 and below um, short vertical here on Intel? Let's take a look at that. We're here to trade. Intel, I'm going to collapse this. And 43 right here. If we do a 43.42, do sell vertical. That gives us a, that 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 hits our mark here of 21. Okay. So we'll come over here to the chart and let's sit this at. That's sitting down below that. So if we if we do one here on Intel, we'll be sitting here. This line right here, which is support, is at 43.62. So we would be below that because we're at 43.42. We'd be below that. So we'd have we'd, we'd have two areas here of potential help. One is this is theoretical support. We're wrestling with it. This is more of a proven level support, and we'd be sitting just below that. Okay. So let's look at how are we doing on time here. Looks like we're getting a little bit tight on time here, investors. Let's see if we can boil something down here. So I've got Intel now. Um, how about KKR or Tesla? Let's do this. Let's say Intel, staying away from the wild ones here. Tesla, oh, that's a fade. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and we'll just go with Intel here, okay? So we, we looked at Bank of America, but we just couldn't get the credit. We'll go ahead for our example trade here. We'll do Intel, okay? Now, I want to go, I want to look at our existing trade that we put on last week. I want to make sure we have time for that. I may come in here and put this Intel trade on after our session. We'll see how time goes. Well, actually, let's go ahead and just put it on here, okay? Here's Intel. Um, so our risk on this, remember our risk is the distance between the strike prices minus the credit. So our risk on this is going to be what? It's going to be $79. So let's play the part of the investor that's okay with, let's say $500 of risk here. I'll go 500 divided by 79. It's going to be six of these. So I'll go ahead and do six of them. Six, two, two, two. Let's see. Three, four, five, six. We want to get the 21, okay? If we get filled at 21, great. If not, we're okay sitting on this for a little while. So I'm going to do a confirm and send. And I want to send that into short verticals right here. I want to take one more peek over here in the chat window. And sometimes I will forget something here and it looks like, looks like we're okay, okay? All right, so we've got this all set up. Let's go ahead and send that in. And bingo, was filled. Okay, so Vester, we do have another trade on. Just a little reminder as far as how we've been doing here because we like to review this. So we've been doing these trades since July of 2020. We've completed 184 trades. We now have two trades outstanding. We have completed 184 trades. We've been successful in 82.6 of those trades. These are all paper money trades. And do keep in mind, the paper money platform tends to be more forgiving than a live situation. Okay, but from a paper money perspective, we've been successful in 82.6, which means, which means we've been unsuccessful on 17.4. Our average return on risk has been 17.6%. And our average days in the trade has been 13.4. All those numbers do include all of our losing trades, so keep that in mind as well. I'd just like to review those each time that we put on a new trade. Okay, so we've got that one in here. Let's take a look, though, because we've got some problems here, investors, and it's right here. You know what? It looks like this is alleviating, alleviating itself a little bit. We put this trade on. I believe, I believe we put this trade on last week on NVO. It looks like it's doing okay. In comparison, it was, it was actually in a little bit more trouble, literally, but it looks like we're moving up a little bit. So our short vertical on NVO is that that's our, that's our short strike price is at 99. We're sitting here at 101, but we broke through a key technical area. Let's come up here to our charts and take a look at NVO here real quick. NVO, there we go right there. So when we put this trade on, this was our line. We wanted to stay above that. And you can see yesterday something happened. I haven't had a chance to take a look at it, but we broke down below that key point. Here's our short strike price. We want to watch this carefully. Luck, fortunately, the 20 period moving average has been successful as far as holding up support here. We'll continue to follow up on this. If it does break down here further, we'll talk about some different things we can do with regards to managing that potential. All right, investors, so let's see how we've done here for today, okay? So what do we want to accomplish here today? Well, we wanted to basically look at 
at at stock selection with 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 with, with regards to our session today we want to look at stock selection as it relates to options okay we wanted to talk about liquidity we wanted to talk about sector and having sector representation with regards to an option traders watch list we also wanted to discuss choice with regards to strike prices and also expirations okay and we and we went through that process we also went through the steps of placing an example short put vertical using the using the parameters or playing the part of the investor that we usually do okay i just want to remind investors you can follow me on x i guess it's x now okay my symbol, my 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 tag over there is at Kenro CS. Also, big thanks to John Mick. I'll also encourage you to follow John on X as well. His his X handle is going to be at John McNichol CS. I'm sure John would be more than happy to send that to you over in the chat window. Also, I believe John is currently teaching an option workshop, if I'm not mistaken. John, if you want to send information over there so they could attend that as well. If I made a mistake there, then I I apologize for that one, but just a couple of heads up in relationship to that, okay? All right, investors, so um, we talked about next steps and some different things to work on. That's basically building that option traders watch list. Just a reminder with regards to our disclosures here, do keep in mind that for the sake of simplicity, the examples of the presentation do not take into consideration commissions and other transaction fees. We do use the paper money software application here, which is for educational purposes only. And we always want to remember the successful virtual trading during one time period does not guarantee successful investing of actual funds during a later time period as market conditions do change continuously. And keep these things in mind here as well. For that, folks, we'll go ahead and sign off. Hey, thanks again for joining us here today for Short Verticals. Hope you have a great afternoon, a fantastic evening. Best of success for investing. And hope to see you again back. Hope to see you back here again next week. Bye, everybody. We'll see you. Thanks again.